and welcome to The Revolution, a bakery equipment and supplies company that's here to help you succeed. And today we'll be doing that by talking about pastry. More specifically, cold water pastry. A traditional pastry used for savoury pies with a very short texture. The pies would generally be intended to be served warm. Typically, it was not a short puff pastry. Historically, this kind of pastry was used and produced with lard. In the modern day, different types of fats can be used to suit your product, to suit your audience. Again, different types of fats will produce slightly different results. It may be that certain pastes are more crisp, certain pastes are simply shorter, and some are just easier to work with. Whether we use margarine, butter, olive oil, or lard, it will dictate certain characteristics of our pastry, and there will be a developmental phase where you'll have to try and test these methods. Our recipe is a traditional recipe that utilises both plain flours and bread flours. Whilst we are doing our utmost to prevent the development of gluten, the introduction of bread flour gives our paste a bit more structural integrity, meaning that if we do desire to press our products out on pie machines and other mechanical presses, the pastry will withstand that uh, and give us better product at the end. The upscalable nature of the recipe means that it's very easy to take a place into a mixer uh, to produce commercial quantities as required. We're doing it by hand today so that you can see the process and see exactly what it is we're looking for. If you are going to use a mixer, or should I say when you do start using a mixer, you want to make sure that that mixer is on its lowest setting. Therefore, it's going to prevent overworking of the dough. That leads very nicely onto the two main issues when producing pastry on a large scale. One, the texture of the dough becomes very tough, almost like an old leather shoe. And two, pastry shrinkage. So during processing and the, the, the manufacturing of our final product, you may experience shrink back. Both of these issues are created by either too much water in the recipe, the best quality pastries will have higher levels of fats and lower levels of waters. First thing to do, try reducing the water and increasing the fats. The second issue is overworking Fortunately, the steps we can take to, to reduce the risks, um, and you'll see that in the recipe that is to come, and that should help prevent the development of the food. And when you experience shrink back, it may be when you're pinning it out, you cut out your lid, and all of a sudden, as soon as you pick up your lid off the, off the work surface, it shrinks back. Or it could be happening during baking. During baking, all the moistures are evaporated, so large quantities of water. Of course, not only does that encourage the development of gluten, which gives us a stretchier dough, but also when it evaporates off in the oven, everything is going to shrink back. So the less water, the better. If it is shrinking back on the work surface, as you notice it, then the dough has been overworked. Too much gluten development is causing that elasticity that you want in bread making. Okay, so here we are, we're going to start putting everything together. Um, so first of all, we're going to take our, our big mixing bowl and our bread flour. Now, there's no hard and fast rules here. You, you can start with your plain flour or your bread flour, but effectively you want to be taking uh, a third of the flours and mixing that with the fats. Uh, you can do half and half, you could use the plain flour. I prefer to use the bread flour because the reason we're going to do this uh, will become apparent 
and I think that's going to be best suited to the bread flour. Um, so we're going to take the bread flour and we're going to put it in our mixing bowl. Job done. Okay, and then we're going to take our 400 grams of fats. Again, we're using butter. Uh, traditionally, this would have been a, a lard. Um, and in the modern day, a whole variety of fats can be used. Um, I will say, uh, the softer your fats are, the easier all this is going to be. <clears throat> and the first thing we want to do is just bring this all together. Now, the aim here is to get the flour uh, completely coated in fats. We, we don't have to worry about developing gluten at this stage. Um, obviously, fats help to, uh, to prevent that, yeah, if anything. Uh, which is why fellow bread makers will always introduce fats towards the end of the recipe. Um, well, basically, <clears throat> we're bringing this together now. Uh, and like I say, we're just trying to soften off the fats. Now, the equivalent to this when stepping up uh, onto a mixer would be uh, we want the mixer on the, on the lowest possible setting. So... Whether it's a spiral or a planetary, you're going to put it on the lowest, slowest setting just to bring the fats and the flour together. And, and like I say, we, we're just looking at coating the flour. Uh, we don't have to worry about overworking the dough. Um, and the fats, when the flour is coated in the fats, what that's going to do is almost protect the flour uh, and create a bit of a, uh, a barrier for later on when we introduce the water. Uh, obviously water is a key component in the development of gluten and that's something we're trying to avoid or certainly keep down to a minimum. Now, the brave among us at this stage would just get your hands in there, which I'm going to do. We ain't got time for this. So, a mixer obviously would make very short work of this, even on the slowest setting. And we should start to see the flour and the fats combine. Again, you can see if the fats were straight out of the fridge, then this is going to be a lot more difficult. Now, this is also the reason that I prefer to do this entirely with the bread flour that we use. We want to be adding the bread flour, as we've said, to, to give the paste a bit of strength and a bit of structure. Um, especially if you're going to be pressing pastry out on pie machines or presses of some description, because... Um, it, again, it's, it's going to help give it a bit of structure and a bit of integrity. Um, however, we don't want to be overdeveloping the gluten. So, I find by completely coating the bread flour in fats, it reduces the, the chance of that even further. Now, as you can see, that there's no dry flour to be seen. It's all been incorporated into the fats. That is now ready. Okay, so now we're going to introduce the plain flour. Again, simply because at this stage, the, uh, the water hasn't been introduced. The concern about overworking the dough or developing gluten is very, very minimal. Um, again, on a, on a mixer, this is something we would do on the slowest setting just to ensure that we're keeping that down to a minimum. And this is the bit that you'll see in all the recipes everywhere where we're going to try and effectively make our breadcrumbs. I'm going straight in with all the flour. That is 500 grams of plain flour. And we're going to start just working this together. Don't kill it but like I say, you don't have to be too worried 
about the overdevelopment and overworking of the dough because that's why we've done it this way. Water, when mixed with the protein in flours, is what will help uh, the development of gluten. And of course, after that, it is then uh, the combining of that, the mixing of that, effectively why we need bread. So we are going to, wherever possible, try and avoid that. As I say, bread makers will tend to introduce <clears throat> fats towards the end uh, of a mix so that it doesn't prohibit gluten development, which of course is what we're trying to do right now. So I'm only using one hand. I'm trying to keep my left hand clean just so I can keep moving things around. But you can see what I'm doing here. I'm sort of just rubbing it between my hands. And the idea is that we're incorporating the flour, rubbing it into those fats and flour mix that we have. And again, a mixer would do this obviously by giving us this kind of a motion. And again, on the slowest setting, not usually number one. And it's this work and efforts that is going to give us that sharp, crumbly texture that we're looking for. It doesn't all need to be dead even. In fact, the more uneven, the better the texture of your pastry, if I'm honest, in my opinion. We're looking for any big bits and uh, any dry flour. So I'm just going to scoop that over, make sure we're turning it around good. You'll know when you're ready <clears throat> because white flour you'll be unable to see. It will all have this yellowy tint to it where obviously it's been incorporated with the fats or in this case because the fats are yellow both hands in now trying to speed things along <clears throat> but you'll see this crumbly breadcrumb like texture this is what we're aiming for. Can't really see any dry flour right now. And that is what we want. So you'll see they're not all exactly the same size. It is not even, but there is no dry flour to be seen. And everything is incorporated. Again, at this stage, we don't need to worry about overworking the dough too much. And I would say I'm pretty happy with that. <clears throat> okay, so we've got our breadcrumbs. Uh, this is the point at which we would introduce our 13 grams of salt. Connoisseurs among you will spot that it is Himalayan pink salt. Uh, not that that matters. We're just going to mix that through. Okay, so we're now at the point where we need to fear overworking the dough. We're going to introduce the water. So this recipe calls with these quantities for about 225 grams of water. I am actually going to try and see if I can get away with 200. If needs be, I can always add a little more. Um, let's see how we go. Okay, so 203 at this point. Four, it's now decided. And we're going to just try a 
and bring this together. We don't want to be working the dough. We just want to bring it together. So first of all, a bit of a mix, a bit of pressure. Again, all that good work at the beginning, coating that first amount of flour in fats is going to help us here because it's that barrier that we built up around that flour is now holding off the water, which of course is there to help us bind it. Water being the key reason most pastries will shrink. And the second is obviously being overworked, uh, generating too much gluten. Okay, so you can see it's starting to come together. I'm trying my best not to need this. Um, again, mixer level one. We gently bring this together. We know we're doing well because we're still getting that nice crumbly effect unlike bread dough when it's not stretching we try and do the window pane test with this you're going to struggle okay at this point i'm going to get some clean uh, clean wrap is the best way forward with this because we can wrap it nice and tight obviously you wouldn't be putting it in cling wrap if you're taking it out of a mixer that's a whole lot of cling wrap um, But a mixer would do a better job of bringing it together than us by hand. So I'm going to take this now. There we go. Onto the cling. Now during all that, we broke those fats down nice uh, in order to incorporate everything in. Now we're going to leave this to rest. It can be left at room temperature, obviously, assuming your room is not 30 degrees. Um, but at least an hour sat now at room temperature will do it well. Even better, you can put it in the fridge, chill it down. That's going to cause those fats to come back together and it'll help bind everything together and pull it together and make our paste. Do be conscious though, that if you're gonna be working with it and you're putting it in the fridge, it needs to come out about an hour before you're ready to use it, simply because it's gonna be like a brick. Let's check in in an hour's time. So here's our pastry. It's been stood in the fridge for about an hour and a half and then I took it out and uh, it's been resting on the side for about 30 minutes. Um, I've had a little mess here. Uh, but what, what we're looking at, obviously, is, is the pastry. So straight away, if I try and pull a piece off, it, it breaks. Yeah, no stretch, or very, very little. Um, and, and as such, we know the paste is good. Uh, it can obviously be compressed, so when you're pinning that, it's going to pin out nice. So hopefully that video will be of some use to you, and if you let us know about your own experiences in the comments below. Uh, any questions at all, feel free to ask. Of course, do remember that we are not bakers, and we don't use these substances every single day. 
What we are is a hub of information, but I will accept that the practical application of that uh, information we may not technically be the best. Uh, but hopefully you can see throughout the process and um, understand the principles that we are trying to push across. Again, if there's something about your pastry that you're just not quite happy with, you need to remember baking is science. There will be slight tweaks and adjustments that you can make. Like I say, first thing, try a different brand of flour. Try a different type of fats. Increasing and decreasing water to fat ratios is always going to create a different type of finish as well, and also how easy it is to work with. If there's anything in particular that you'd like to ask us, or a particular video that you would like to see, whether it's a certain type of machine that you're interested in, do let us know below and we'll do our very best to get that information to you. In the meantime, thank you for being a part of the revolution. We'll see you next time.